at this point, you know, like we knew each other. I know you guys are, you know, learning all that. So, you know, having camera is actually, you know, help me, you know, for most of the cases. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. So, you know, you know the deal. One of the things you got to do is you see this plus new here, this button right here. Yeah. Okay. Click that. Okay. It's going to ask you to input some number, right? I mean, some, some file and you're going to say Python, Python one. Okay. I know you have a Python one that pie already, but this time, okay. We look at Jupyter notebook. Okay. Click Jupyter notebook. Okay. And then it's going to ask you, okay, you need to select a kernel. So what is a kernel? Well, kernel is something like, you know, it's like the brain, right? But like you need something to process it. You need the brain. So you want to choose Python 3, Ubuntu, Linux. Okay. Python 3, Ubuntu, Linux. Okay. And then you should see your interface like this. Okay. So give me a thumbs up once you get here. All right. So what is Python 3? I guess it's a, like a version of Python. Yes. It's a version of Python. So Python used to be Python 2, okay? And Python 2 ran for a long time. And finally, like, uh, people are like, hey, hey, you know, here is not consistent. Here we need modification. Now, here we go. We have Python 3, okay? So you are learning Python 3. All right. So um, Python 3 is exceedingly simple, but we have to learn how to use this interface first, okay? And I'm going to do, you know, some very simple thing, okay? You can say... You know, um, you can say a right space equal one. Okay, so a equal one, right? And then you do shift, right? You hold shift and press enter. Okay. Notice this whole thing here. It says in one, right? In one, meaning that this is input one. Okay. So by the way, you just defined a variable called a that has value equal to one. Wow. All right. So how do I know if value is actually one? Well, that's pretty simple. You just press A, right? You look at the value, variable uh, value, shift, enter. Okay. And now it says in two, input two and output is one, right? Because A here, you assign that to be one. Okay, let's assign more variables. We can assign, you know, something more interesting. We can say, you know, B equal to 3.14, okay, shift and enter, right? Press B, shift and enter. See that, how easy that is? Yeah, and then you can do something like A plus B, shift and enter. A times B, shift enter. A minus B, shift and enter. Isn't this simple? Yeah, all right. Okay. Rex, you want to go to the coding center. All right, so let me ask you guys something. Rex, you want to go to the coding center? And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll walk you through, okay, Rex? But guys, what if you do C? What's going to happen? Shift enter. What's going to happen? Well, it, nothing will happen because C is not defined. Yeah, why don't you guys try it? What happened there? Okay, go to the coding center, okay? Go to code center and you wanna say, you know, go to your folder, plus new, and you wanna create a Jupyter notebook, okay? By the way, guys, uh, send all your Jupyter notebook in Slack, okay? Because I wanted to take a look at it, okay? So can someone tell me if I put a C here, What's what's happening right now? It's an error because C isn't defined. Exactly. So all these variables, you know, you can see here, I'm just using, you know, like basically um, like a, a, a letter to represent it. And if C here is not defined, it's going to yell at me, right? So it says name error, C is not defined, okay? 
And this is called an exception, right? Meaning there's something wrong with it. You got it? Okay. Rex, have you, um, have you got into coding center? Yeah, I made it. All right, good. Send, send your code, send, send this link, right? Copy this link, right? Copy this link and send it in the channel. Okay, send it in the channel. Okay, now I want to define another variable. I said D equal to zero, shift enter, D equal to zero. What if I do A divided by D? What's going to happen? What do you think? Uh, we're also going to get an error because you can't divide by zero. Yeah. Zero, it's literally saying zero division error. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. So about the coding center, there are a couple of tricks. Okay. You see this plus button here? Okay. So that's add a cell below. So you can click, click, click. You can add more cell below. See that? You can add more cells below. Okay. And the other thing you can do, okay, the other thing you can do is you see this button here? It basically says restart and run everything. Okay. For whatever reason, this thing is, you know, like maybe sometimes the coding center has some trouble. You click this and you say run all. Okay, run all. And then this will just, you know, start and run everything. You see, it ran everything already. There's another thing that I want to teach you. If you do type, if you do A, right, and you say, you say, you say print, okay, parentheses, A, and you say type, A, so it's going to tell you, oh, okay, I can print A, which is, has a value of one, and the type of A is INT. What is INT? Integer. Integer, yes, integer, right? And then I can do, you know, the same thing as a print, let's just say uh, print B, right? And you can say type B. Ooh, okay, B is 3.14. Right, and it is a float, right? It is a float. Okay, again, so now you can try, what about, you know, D and C, okay? Try the same thing. Uh, now I actually wanted to go and take a look for all your web uh, uh, notebooks. Rex, have you made a IPython notebook? Have you? Rex, you wanna do this, new, right? And you say, you know, IPyth you wanna say Python one, Right, and you want to say Jupyter Notebook, right? Kernel is one to it. Okay, so I'm gonna send this to you. Okay, Rex. Hey, Rex, you want to do it here? All right, follow along, guys. If you have questions you should ask. Don't hesitate, just ask. All right. So what is print and what is type? And you notice they have this color here. You see, it's like a pink. It's like purplish color. Do you guys know what they are? Like in build command. Yeah, like 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 these guys. What what are these guys? Python commands. Yes, they're they're actually built in functions, built in Python functions. Uh, can you guys do a Google search and tell me more about Python building functions? See what kind of Python building functions we have. Okay, do let me know what kind of Python functions we have. Uh, I think there's I think there's a sorted one. Ah, I'm guessing like sorts. Does a sort? Python um, building functions. Rex, the way you want to work on this is you define something a equal to one and you do shift into a equal to one, right? And shift into, and now you can have a, see that Rex next time. Don't be late because you're late. You know, then we have to catch up, you know, with you Python building functions, right? Oh my gosh. There's so many of them. Do you guys see that? There's so many of them. It's not even kidding. Uh, what, what did we do? We had a, um, we had what? What print? Where's print? Where's print? Where is that? I don't see it. The book property below pow. Yeah, print. Okay, let's read this. Print objects to the text stream file separated by sep and followed by and. Huh, I didn't know there's a sep and and. Huh, I didn't even know that. Okay, anyway, so there's a print. And the other one used is type, right? What is type right here? Type, uh, with one argument, we turn the type of object. So when you think about it, right? What are we doing here is we print out the value of A 
and we look at the type of the object. Okay, so so far we learned about a, which is integer, and type of a is integer, right? And type of b is a float. And I can define more variables. I can define variables like this. Let's just say my underscore name, right, equal to, you know, look at this. I, I do quotes, okay, two double quotes, okay, and let's say Michael Kujak, okay, shift enter, okay, and I can say, and I can say like this. I can say print my name. Print my name here, right? And I can say H equal to 20. Uh, I'm way more than 20 year old, but I want it to be 20 year old, okay? And I can say print H, look at that, right? So the type of my name here, my name here is string. Do you see that? String. Okay, so how many we learn already? We learned about three things, right? We learned about uh, integer, right? We learned about float. We learned about uh, string, okay? We learned about three things already. How is everyone doing? Are you following along? Okay, Rex, you want to follow along. You don't want to just watch it, okay? You watch it, you want to be able to learn it, okay? I see your notebook is empty, right? I want you to type it and try it yourself, okay? What if I do this, guys? I do my name plus H. What do you think this is going to happen? That would be an error because you can't add like different types. Of. Mm. Let's try that. Shift enter. Type error. Can only concatenate string, not integer to a string. So this just tells you, right? Like my name is a string here, and this guy is the integer. You can't do that, right? But what if I do this? I say my school equal to Stanford. Okay, shift enter. And I say my name plus my school. What do you think this is happening? Just concatenating two strings. Yeah, it just concatenating two strings, which is just use the plus sign. All right, what if I do this? I say my house. What if I do shift and enter here? What if I do that? Well, it's not defined, so I guess it'll just be an error. My house here is not defined, shift enter. Name error, nothing's defined. But if you do the quotation mark around that, and shift enter, and this is okay. Why is that? I mean, because you're just, <clears throat> you're just writing that as a string and you're not really doing anything. That's right. That's right. Do you guys hear that? So no string, right? No, no quotation. Python thinks this is a variable and it's going to check. Oh, this variable is it defined, right? Oh, it's, it's not defined. I don't know what to do. Right? So nothing will happen. I, I think this is too simple. Let's, let's move, move on a little bit, you know, before, before we do, do anything interesting. How are you guys doing? Are you guys following along? Or you got a questions? Or, you know, like, you know, I should slow down a little bit. By the way, you should ask questions. You should ask questions. How about this? Uh, I'm gonna force you guys to ask three questions. No more, no less, just three questions. And the questions can relate to this, can also not relate to this, but you need to ask three questions. You can be very curious, for example, like, Oh, how many different data types there is? I need questions. Please ask questions. So I'm doing the print my name thing and yeah. the print and type functions, they're not coming as they should. Like it's black instead of purple. Ooh, like what is going on there? Yeah. So like when I press shift enter, it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. So let me take a look. For the ones who are watching this, I want you to go ahead and define another variable uh, called uh, rain, okay? And I want you to basically define that variable as a boolean. Okay? You probably don't know what a boolean is, but you need to research about what is a boolean in Python. Wait, what is the variable supposed to be called? Oh, yeah, so uh, hold on, boolean, uh, you can call it rain. Pragnia, you see this size? Okay, everybody focus here. Everybody focus here. This is a pretty important concept. 
You look at this cell here. This cell here has, has no number in front of it, right? So this cell is actually called like, basically like when you look at the type here, it's a raw cell, right? So you want to click code and then it has the, the right color. Yeah. So the cell can be like, you know, raw, can be code, can be markdown. Markdown is just, you know, a pretty simple formatting language. You know, for example, right here, this one right here, I put in as markdown. Right. And you can, you know, use your hash sign, right? A hash sign. And that's going to give you the first title, right? You can, you know, do two hash signs and it's going to be smaller. A single hash sign is the biggest one. See that? Okay. So you can use this to organize it. Uh, I'm going to tell you the secret to be a top AI developer, like right now. Okay. If you follow this, you can become a top AI developer. The way to be a top AI developer is you're extremely, extremely, extremely organized. You have to be extremely organized because the program you create will constantly getting more and more complex. If you're not organized, you will lose track what you were doing, right? So it's important for you to follow, you know, make sure this whole notebook is clear, concise, right? And can execute from top to bottom, right? As a matter of fact, Anything like this, like arrow stuff, you should delete it. But for illustration purposes, I leave it here. Okay, my house is not defined, which is why this thing is uh, doing the way it is. Okay, so Boolean, what do I mean? Okay, so it's like this, okay? So Boolean, what is a Boolean variable? So Boolean is just very simple. It's just, you know, true or false, okay? It's pretty important. Right, you can say, you know, um, uh, did did homework, did homework, right? Equal to uh, true, like that. Did homework equal to true, and I can do something like this. I can say, uh, so this is this is something very interesting. Okay, if if did homework, if did homework, right? You see, and then I do a colon here, and I do enter, enter. Don't shift in, just enter. And look, take a look. It actually gave me like like indent, right? Four spaces right in front of it. And I'll tell you why, okay? You can say print, I did my homework for AI camp, okay? And I can say print again. Uh, I will learn a lot today, right? And you do shift enter. It, print, it printed actually two sentences. Notice here, this is an if statement, okay? It has to basically check the condition here, if it's true or false. And because I said did homework is true, and therefore it actually did two print statements. So once again, you wanted to follow along, okay? Uh, Rax, you did a good job. You actually, you know, like uh, input number five here, you can see Rax is not defined. That's why it's yell at you, right? And then you put basically, uh, you know, string around it. Now it's defined. Okay. Prakya, Prakya, you're doing good. You're following along. Okay. Try the, try the if statements. Okay. Everybody try the if statements. This is really one of the most important concepts. Okay. One of the most important concepts in Python. So once you did the if statements, raise your hand. Good, good. Now, Gia, what if you delete the colon? What if you delete this? What's going to happen? Wait, if you delete what? The, co the colon right here, this colon here. What if you delete that? Um, I don't know how to explain it, but basically it won't like take the print statements under that. Try that in your, um, in your file. You know, try it. If I do that, do you guys see that? Look, there's a little arrow here. That's so cute, right? <laughs> it actually tells you, hey, invalid syntax. You can do this, okay? You got to put a, a colon here, right? Because it's basically checking if this is true or false. If it's true, okay, then I'm going to execute this block of statements. Can someone tell me why do I call these two a block? 
What made them to be one block? They're both in the if statement, so they're part of the same block. They're both under the if statements, yes. But there's something else that enable them to be one block. Can you guys search for Python indentation? I have a question. Yeah. Can you go back? Wait, so why is it saying the file name is I Python dash input dash 23 in the letter? Is that because you named it Michael, right? So, so, or Python 1. So why does it say that? Uh, where does it say what? Like where? In their error. It says the file. Oh, so here? Why does it say that name? Yeah. That's a good question. I think this is the internal ID. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Good job, guys. Ask questions I don't know. Good job. Okay. So if you search for Python indentation, okay, I'm going to send you this. But we're going to read this together. Do you guys remember what's the job? What is the, what is my job here in AI camp? Make us not need you. Exactly. Right. To put it, you know, politely, make it that you don't need me. I want you to read about this. Okay. And figure out what is this indentation thing? All right, so Python indentation, indentation refer to space at the beginning of a code line. Okay, these spaces. All right. Other languages, indentation is uh, for readability only. Indentation in Python is very important, very important. Python use indentation to indicate a block of code, a block of code. So for example, if five more than two, print five is greater than two, try to solve. Python will give you an error if you skip the indentation. Okay, we can try that. So right here, right? If we don't do this indentation, right? Delete these four spaces, shift enter, ah, indentation error, expect an indented block. You see that? Because after colon, it's actually expect you that you indent. And this program is smart enough, you press enter, it's gonna indent automatically. Everything indented, you know, is gonna execute in the same sequence of order. All right, so what else? Uh, the number of spaces is up to you as a programmer, but it has at least, has to be at least one. So we use four here. You have to use the same number of spaces in the same block of code. Otherwise Python will give you an error. If five more than two, print five is more than two, five is more than two. But if you indent it differently, that's, a, that's an error as well. So we can go over here and we can give another tap right? Shift and print is going to tell you, look, right here, there's a little arrow, this cute arrow tells you that's an arrow. So this is not like other places where it, uh, indentation doesn't really matter. You have to do it here, right? That's right. You okay. have to do it here. So I guess that's kind of good because then it kind of also gets you into the habit of doing that. That's right. It, it forces you. more organized. Yes. Yes. It makes the whole code look a lot better. Right, because everything's indented. Every program is looking the same. Unlike, for example, have you guys learned about Java or C++ and things like that? Yeah, like you don't have to indent for that to work sometimes. Yeah, you just need the brackets. You need brackets, right? Right. And these brackets are everywhere and you're counting over. Am I actually getting enough of my brackets? I want you to say, you know, if, I want you to try, try this one. If A is more than B, uh, Okay, I want you to do this, okay? I want you to write this code. If A is more than B, then print, um, print today is a good day, okay? If A is less than B, then print, I love watching movies. By the way, you know, you can notice um, if A is equal, B, then print, uh, I love eating, I love eating in and out. Do you guys love eating in and out burgers? Yes? Never been there. Never been there? No. Wait, Eric, which state are you from again? I'm from Massachusetts. Oh, no, we're going to send you some in and out burgers. <laughs> All right, try this, okay, try this. I'm going to send it. So you may feel AI can be simple and easy. Yes, if you do, you do your homework, but sometimes fun is hard. Right now we're in a very simple phase. And it's important for you to ask questions, right? Because if you don't ask questions, there's no way, you know, for me to know 
you know, whether you are understanding it or not, right? Do ask questions, okay? Try that, try that homework, you know, exercise I just you know, talked about. Yeah, are you assigned A and B random values? Was I supposed to do that? Uh, yeah, you can do that. You know, I would just rely on the fact that we already assigned A and B already. Oh, yeah, I forgot, I think. But that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, you can redefine that, yeah. Okay, yeah, I wrote the code. Uh, can you look at mine? It has a syntax error. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, double equal sign is comparison. Like that. Double equal sign, Rex. Okay, thank you. So sim single equal sign is a sign. Double equal sign is compare, compare if they're equal or not. The next day. Okay, I'm going to give out the answers. Okay, it's pretty simple, right? I say, you know, A equal to 99, you know, B equal to one, right? So if A is more than B, right? Print, right? Today is a good day, right? And I can say, if A less than B, right? Then print, uh, what is it? I love watching movies. What's your, what's your guys' favorite movie? Do you have a favorite movie? If a double equal to B, right, then print, I love eating in and out. Like that. It printed out today's good day because A is more than B, right? Or I can say A is less than B. I can say A is 0.5. Shift enter, it printed out I love watching movies, right? And I can say A equal B by assigning A equal to one. Shift enter. And then it says print, I love reading in and out. Okay, so have you guys tried the whole thing? Give me yeah. a thumbs up, thumbs down if you have tried it. Okay. Are you able to follow along? Do you think this is too fast? This is too slow? Tell me, or it's just about right? Is it too fast or too slow? Just about right? It's good. It's good? Yeah. Yes, fine. Okay. What about Rax, Agnes, Ragea, Ra and Gia? It's good. Okay. That's yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, what's next? Um, so, you know, we learn about if, right? A more than B. What if I wanted to say A more than B, I'm gonna print out this, you know, everything else, I'm gonna print something else. So you can do this, okay? Let me copy this, right? And then you say, if A more than B, you know, you print today's good day, enter and delete all the space, you know, ahead of that, you say else, right? Notice this whole thing change color, right? To kind of purplish color, right? You do a colon, right? And you say print, uh, a is less than or equal to B, right? And let's say A equal to one, B equal to one, shift enter, it's gonna print A is less than or equal to B. So this is called if and else block, right? If and else statement. It's actually really, really useful. You can even do this. You can just say, you know, for the about statement, you can even do this, L if. L if, right? L if uh, A is less than B, right? You print uh, A is less than B, right? And else uh, you just say A is equal to B. In this case, of course, A is equal to B. If I put B equal to two, it says A is less than B. If I if put A equal to four, it says today's good day. So we just transformed you know, these three if statements into one block, right? If, L if, and else. Notice every single, you know, if here, there's a condition, right? Which is trying to do the condition to prepare, to, to compare, right? And end with a column, right? And, uh, you know, for the A less than B part, L if part, there's also a condition and there's a column. Else, you don't need any condition, right? Because this is everything else. Right, and there is a colon here. Can you just use another if statement instead of the elif? Yes, you can. Okay, I'm gonna teach you uh, another uh, example, you know, a print statement, and then we're gonna do uh, an exercise, okay? Another exercise. So, um, 
So I said my age, right? My underscore age. Shift enter. Oh, my age is not defined. I can say my age over to 20, right? And then I can do this. I can say print, right? I can say message, message, message equal to uh, I am, you know, this curly brackets, years old, okay? And dot format, right? And put my age here. So what's going on here is um, this string is actually, you know, an object that has a method called format. You notice the method, the format is actually turned to purple, right? And this format is literally just formatting this string here by replacing these curly brackets with this variable here, okay? And I can say, you know, print message. It says, I'm 20 years old, right? Because they literally replace whatever in the curly brackets with this thing here. And I can do this, right? I can say, uh, my name, my name is um, Michael Kujana. I'm gonna say message equal to um, uh, hello. My my name is the curly brackets right. Uh, format right. My name. So again, right. The format function allows you to replace whatever the value of the variable is to this curly brackets. Shift enter right, and I can say print message. Oops, message, right? This is hello, my name is Michael Kurta. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a homework, not a homework, sorry, uh, in-class exercise. Okay, do you see what I, uh, I wrote there? Okay, so, you know, create a variable called my apple and assign to a value, you know, an integer actually, create a variable called my watermelon and assign to a, you know, integer. Uh, if the total number of fruits you have is less than 10, you print, I'm starving, okay? If the total number of fruits you have is more than or equal to 10, print, I have enough to start a party. So we're gonna use the next, you know, a couple of minutes to finish this. Wait, what are we supposed to be doing? Uh, create a variable called my apple, assign it to be an integer. Everything's a slack. Oh, uh, okay, thank you. Just a quick question. Um, I didn't like have trouble with this, but when you like write an if statement, um, yep. you don't always need parentheses, right? It just it doesn't matter. I mean, unless uh, you we don't write what an if statement. Yeah, you don't always have to have the parentheses, right? You don't need parentheses at all. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, you don't need parentheses at all. Okay. One hour later. How you guys doing? Were you guys able to do it? Three hours later. Okay, have you guys finished the, the exercise? So Rax, uh, you are missing, a, you, you're having an actual code there. So at Rax, look at my screen. So you had, you, had this, you had this code here, you want to get rid of it. So you, had, you don't have to, had an extra code. Other than the code, I think your code is good. Kia. Wait, this is Pagna. Okay, you're, you're trying it. My apple and my watermelon can just be numbers. Oh yeah, All right. So these can just be numbers. Arushi, you finished? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll see you next week. Agnes, Agnes is almost there. We're defining it. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Eric, you doing okay? Yeah, I finished. You finished? Okay, good. So one thing, uh, guys. You know, I, I know that we have six students here. Some folks will, you know, finish. You know things earlier than you, but you know what? Um, you know I'm pretty sure Eric uh, Arush, you guys had some programming experiences, right? You guys learned yeah. about Python. I mean, you, you guys learned about Java probably. I did kind of both. You did both. Yeah, JavaScript. JavaScript. Yeah. Here we go. Right. So when you're learning this, is almost like a review, right? So for everybody else, you know, this could be the first time, right? So uh, only compare yourself, right? Uh, to yourself yesterday, right? And see if you have grown or not. That's the important thing. Okay, because of time, I'm just gonna review the answer, okay? Review half the answer. So I can say my, uh, my apples, right? Equal to four. My uh, watermelon, 
equal to 10. And I say total fruit, right? Total fruit equal to my apples plus my watermelons. Okay, like that. And then I say if total fruit, right, is, uh, what did I say? Less than 10, right, you print, right? I am starving, right? And you just say, you know, else, right? Print, I have enough to start a party. That's it, pretty simple. You see that? So the important thing here is I define another variable to make my life easier, right? That's the key, that's the key. Everything else is almost like syntax. Okay, all right guys, stop, what are you doing? Look at my screen please. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of review. Right, a little bit of review. You can define a variable by using, you know, a assign a value to it. Right, assign a value to it. Uh, if you just type a without defining anything, Python's going to yell you because Python doesn't know what this is for. Right, these va variables can they have different, you know, uh, type. So, for example, this is float and that's integer. Right, you can do algorithmic stuff together with them. Right. But if you don't really define them and you tell Python to print it out, Python doesn't know what to do. And this whole thing here is called exception, right? Exception. You can divide by zero, right? That's also exception. You can actually look at the type of things. So these are purple stuff, they're called built-in functions. And we know that there's a lot of built-in functions. I can define my name, which is you know string, right? I can define my age, which is an integer. I can add my name plus my age because they don't know how to add string to an integer, right? But I can add integer, I can add strings and add, I can add integers together, right? Uh, and, and when you add like strings, they just concatenate. Now this special variable called a Boolean, you know, it's just true or false, right? We learned about the if statements, we learned about the code block, right? Indentation is important, right? And then we learn about if statements, we learn the if and the else statements, right? And we learned about how to do format, right? And we did some homework. I mean, exercise. Guys, you know, in AI camp, you will learn Python in about six classes. Okay. At Stanford, it was a whole quarter, right? But we will learn it in six classes. Okay. So we'll go pretty fast. So make sure you do the homework. Okay. Any questions? All right. So, you know, next time we're going to do something fun. I'll see you next week. Okay. All right, sounds good. Thank you. All right, bye bye. Okay, bye. bye, thank you. Bye bye.